Item number, SCP-253. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. At this time, SCP-253 poses a substantial threat to humanity. SCP-253 is to be kept under Biosafety Level 4 protocols at all times. All research is to be conducted at a site where incineration and irradiation protocols can be swiftly enacted. That is, geographically isolated, and does not possess a diverse biosphere. The sterilization protocols shall be enacted following the occurrence of any event on this list. Communications blackout lasting longer than 48 hours. Power disruption lasting longer than one minute during any active experiments involving SCP-253. Abnormal rise in average temperatures beyond a change of 6 degrees Celsius, 11 degrees Fahrenheit, or rise in humidity levels to 90% relative humidity. Manifestations of unusual electromagnetic phenomena during testing of SCP-253. At the conclusion of testing, any subjects exposed to SCP-253 are to be disposed of, and their remains are subject to the sterilization protocol. Any researcher leaving the facility is to undergo two weeks of mandatory chemotherapy, followed by a 15-day quarantine. Description SCP-253 is a cluster of undifferentiated human cells, matching the physiological traits of cancer. As per cancerous cells, cultured samples of SCP-253 will grow indefinitely if given an adequate source of nutrition. SCP-253 is contagious, able to pass from human to human, as well as to some animal species. SCP-253 is not an airborne contagion, but physical contact with surface neoplasms on infected subjects will spread the plague. The first sign of SCP-253 infection is the emergence of skin lesions, typically dime-sized, 2 centimeters in diameter, in groups of 3 to 5, at the site of infection. Within 12 hours after the appearance of the lesions, MRI scans show the development of neoplasms within the brain. At this time, the neoplasms do not induce neurological symptoms. Over the next 24 to 48 hours, numerous skin lesions start to emerge and grow in size. These lesions often induce substantial swelling in surrounding tissue, which can be quite painful for the subject. Often the pain, if left untreated, leaves many subjects unable to move. Towards the end of the 48-hour period, neoplasms start to emerge in the lymphatic system, and neurological symptoms start to manifest. The neurological symptoms of SCP-253 are different for each patient depending on which part of the brain the invasive cells have contaminated, with one exception. Each human patient heretofore exposed to SCP-253 has felt a complete cessation of pain 47 to 49 hours after infection. Other neurological symptoms include inability to focus attention, disorganized speech, memory loss, hallucinations, euphoria, megalomania, inappropriate emotional responses, sociopathy, catatonia. The neoplasms do not seem to respond to radiation and chemotherapy with high-dose mitoxantrone, irinotecan, and dacarbazine has only minimal effects. Chemotherapy was observed to kill some cells and markedly slow the growth of others, and therefore might be useful for post-exposure prophylaxis but is ineffective in established disease. If the mass of cancerous cells within a population does not reach a biomass threshold of approximately 1,400 kilograms, 1,400 kilograms or 3,100 pounds, the cells will overwhelm the host within five days, resulting in death. If not transferred to a new host, the cancer cells will consume any remaining usable biomass of the host's corpse before finally running out of resources and dying. However, if the mass of cancer cells within a population reaches the threshold, electromagnetic phenomena will start to manifest. The sources of these phenomena appear to be the infected hosts, but the mechanism of the EM manipulation is not understood at this time. Furthermore, it appears the EM emanations facilitate some sort of communication between the hosts, 
coordinated in some fashion by the neoplasms, the hosts start to act as one entity spread through many bodies. The intelligence of this entity is initially animalistic and reactive. As the intelligence of the Gestalt entity is believed to be based on the remaining brain tissue within the hosts, it is hypothesized that the entity may be able to achieve human-like intelligence. The events from Incident I.J77.82 appear to support this hypothesis, and research suggests that some of the more unsettling things seen at the hospital are manifestations of this intellect. Until suitable methods can be created to jam the EM transmissions of the end-stage infection entity, and until efficacious treatment alternatives for the diseases known as cancer enters common usage, the utmost care must be taken with samples of SCP-253. Addenda 253A Proposal that SCP-253 be classified as Euclid is pending review of Incident I.J77.82 by the Overseers. 253B SCP-253 has been given provisional Euclid classification. Final report on Incident I.J77.82 has been released. Research into the events of Incident I.J77.82 has been approved. 253C Research involving approaching the threshold biomass in human subjects has been denied. Decision on request to test threshold biomass in cultured samples pending. 253D Use of SCP-500 in experiments with SCP-253 has been denied. 253E Use of SCP-427 in experiments with SCP-253 have been approved. Early results are not encouraging. Despite success using 427 to treat other forms of cancer, in this instance, 427 appears to induce accelerated growth in both tumorous growths as well as in the patient. Subjects were terminated as they neared the critical threshold for use with 427. Request to take patients beyond the critical threshold is pending. Incident I.J77.82 SCP Involved SCP-253 Preamble On date undisclosed, the Foundation became aware of a significant event leading to the quarantine of an entire hospital under the pretext of an Ebola epidemic. Due to reports of the abnormal electromagnetic phenomena associated with the hospital, the report was transmitted through unofficial channels and eventually made its way to the Foundation. Concerned that other groups might get involved, the Foundation sent to investigate the situation. At 1800 hours, an infiltration squad of the task force entered the hospital. Site Investigation Summary Examination of the exterior of the hospital showed no abnormal signs. Telescopic examination through windows showed human shapes of indeterminate origin moving through the halls of the hospital. Examination of the electromagnetic spectrum showed the hospital was giving off EM energy. Analysis of the signal showed a pulse of consistent energy lasting between 29.2 seconds and 45.1 seconds. This pulse was followed by a 2.3 to 11.2 second cessation of emission. The pulse's energy was primarily concentrated in three bands, 82% in the SHF radio frequency band, 11% in the ELF radio frequency band, and 7% in a band centered near 1.2 terahertz. The SHF pulse initially interfered with the site investigation team's satellite linkups, but a workaround was quickly implemented. The IR spectrum showed a radiation spike consistent with a temperature within the structure of approximately 40 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Seismic investigation proved inconclusive. Audio logs. Log begins on date undisclosed at 18.02.03. A57. Power is cut to the building, right? A34. Ops confirms. The building is physically disconnected from power grid. A57. Why are the lights still on? G1. We're not here to speculate, just to find whatever is causing this and to get out. A29. Damn, it's so hot in here. G1. The eggheads actually anticipated that. Our operations are to be limited to prevent fatigue, overheating, and dehydration. A12. 
Do you guys feel that? Something's wrong with the floor. G1. What do you mean? A12. Permission to investigate. G1. A57. A34. Check the perimeter. Make sure we're clear. Pause. A34. Clear. A57. Clear. G1. Permission granted. A12. There's some sort of vibration traveling through the floor. No recorded chatter for 123 seconds. A12. It's intermittent. 30 to 40 second bursts of vibration, followed by a 5 to 10 second rest. G1. All right. We're heading deeper into the structure. Addendum. Prior to being removed from the power grid, investigation had shown that the structure was actually pumping power in the grid. Seismic sensor external to the site did not pick up any vibration, even while a great number of human figures were seen to be moving within the structure. Log begins on date undisclosed at 18.12.42. A29. I've got a contact at 10 o'clock. A48. I've got a contact too. G1. No appearance of hostility. Just watch them. A29. Oh God. What's wrong with their faces? G1. We'll get samples on our way out. For now, let's finish up investigation of the first floor and make our way to the second. A12 for the log. A12. Examination of contacts. Subjects appear human with some sort of growths all over them. The contacts are remaining in one spot, but swaying back and forth. The portions of their eyes that I can see that have not been covered by boils show only sclera. G1. A34. A34. Rooms appear empty, in disarray. Some of the beds show some sort of brown fluid covering them. This fluid can also be seen on the floors. A12. It almost seems like the lights above the contacts are brighter. Addendum. Samples were unable to be taken of brown fluid before it was required to destroy and sterilize the site of investigation. Log begins on date undisclosed at 18.16.42. G1. We are making our way up the stairs, about to open doors to the second floor. A34. A deep thump can be heard over the log. A34. The hallways are not lit. It's almost completely dark. Activating flashlight. Oh god. G1. What do you see? A34. They're everywhere. They're filling the hallways. They're making some sort of sound. A deep, hollow moaning can be heard over the log, increasing in intensity. From this point forward, several distortions can be heard on the log. G1. Treat. Re A34. They're moving clo- G1. Fa ba fall back. A34. D hit. Distortions continue in background. G1. Say again, A34. I couldn't hear you over the static. A34. One of them touched me. G1. We'll regroup near the reception desk, A34. You're officially being removed from the mission. A34. Yes, sir. Proceeding to recep- Unknown. Unintelligible. G1. Say again. I didn't hear you. Unknown. Unintelligible. G1. A34. A34, respond. G1. Team, roll call with hand sign. A12. A12 in fighting form. A29. A29 in fighting form. A48. A48 in fighting form. A57. A57 in fighting form. G1. G1 in fighting form. Pause. G1. All right. A-34 is MIA. We'll proceed to the reception desk. Log begins on date undisclosed at 18-20-27. A-29. The hell? G-1. Damn it, A-29. If you're going to respond to something, describe it for the log. A-12. Reception desk is covered with the brown fluid from before. 
Words have been spelt out. From the progenitor. Several symbols are present as well, showing signs of intelligence. A48 is photographing. A57. To our six. They're coming. G1. Defensive positions. Can we make it to the door? A57. Several contacts are in the way. They do not appear to be approaching us, displaying the swaying behavior. G1. We'll retreat that way. A12. What's wrong, A12? A12. They've done something to their faces. G1. What are you talking about? Oh, Jesus. A48. Get a picture of that. A48. That's one way to use a scalpel. Wait a minute. Is that a necklace made of teeth? A29. The f the f the f. Sounds of weapon fire. G1. Cease fire! Perchant, cease fire! Eric! Note. Eric Perchant is A12. Distortions and log increase. A12. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. G1, A34, and A57. Unintelligible. A12. I hope this finds you release. Momentary sound of a large explosion, followed by log cutting out. A29. He just blew himself up? G1. That doesn't matter. They're coming closer. We have to get out. Weapons free. A57. Yes, sir. Static for 37 seconds. Unknown. In prehistory, the essence of life waited in the darkness. Its children turned against it. Now, all will be returned to the essence. Addendum. Past this point, no further portions of the log can be salvaged. A29, A57, and G1 escaped from the hospital. Sterilization protocol was enacted minutes later. As it appeared, several of the infected hosts were attempting to escape from the structure. The three survivors of the infiltration team were placed in quarantine, and samples of SCP-253 were obtained from them. Though treatment was attempted, none of them survived past five days. A-48 was lost in the retreat, and unfortunately, his camera was unable to be salvaged. Though wireless backup protocols were in use, the distortion effect in the hospital meant a great deal of the photographic evidence collected in Incident I.J77.82 is fragmentary. A-48's and A-34's corpses were found. Two is fragmentary. A-48's and A-34's corpses were found, badly burned. Remains identifiable as A-12 were not recovered. Other human remains were found, but with no recognizable trace of SCP-253. The sterilization site has been determined to be devoid of all traces of SCP-253 and will leave Foundation custody six months after the release of this incident report. End of Incident Report I.J77.82 Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-252, Humboldt Squid, right now. Or, for the complete course, watch this playlist.